Hello, dear participants. As an interpreter, I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Alex Sorokin, PhD and Executive Director of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. We are starting a special course that will contain nine lectures that will dip you into a new field of knowledge that stands in a border between two sciences that at first sight hardly can be combined. Those are Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine. There were many attempts all over the world to combine these two medicines. We know that Dr. Vasant Lad in his books draw a parallel between Marmavidya and acupuncture and also between Pancha Mahabhuta and the Wusin system. The information you'll hear at these lectures is a completely new material. You won't find it anywhere else. It is the newest research of mine that I've finished recently. So this is a new fine structured system of knowledge that I would like to share with you. Today's lecture is dedicated to one of the Ayurvedic constitution times, uh, types that has a direct match in traditional Chinese medicine. In traditional Chinese medicine it is called Qi energy. In Ayurvedic practice we call it ojas and determine it through vata imbalance. Each lecture will be concluded with the practical recommendations for the correction of such a constitutional imbalance from the point of view of both Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine. I hope it would become a powerful tool in your practice. To start our lecture, I want to refer to a name of one of the most famous physicians of traditional Chinese medicine, who is often mythologically associated with the divinity patronizing all the physicians. I'm talking about Bian Chue. And I would want to tell you one fascinating parable about this person which is relevant in terms of the constitutional therapy, which in its turn is a key of all the healing systems. Once Ban Chue had a conversation with a story writer named Gong Huo over a cup of tea. Gong Huo asked a question, Dear Ban Chue, there are three brothers in your family and all of you are physicians. Tell me, whom do you think is the best physician of three of you? Bian Chue claimed that the best physician is the older brother. The middle brother stands down a bit. And I am the worst, said Bian Chue. The story writer was deeply surprised. How come you are the worst? You are the most famous physician in China and nobody knows your brothers except the people who live in your district. And Bian Chue gave an answer that explains why the constitution-based approach is that important in any treatment and needs to be advocated. My older brother treats the diseases even before they appear. The patients may not even have a clue that disease is going to happen because they don't have any symptoms or complaints. And my brother shifts the disease off even before it starts manifesting itself. That is why his fame doesn't spread all over the country. The middle brother treats the diseases as early, at early stages and most of the patients think that he can manage only minor disorder. As for me, I start healing when the disease is at its worst. I sting the vessels, let the blood, make applications, carry out different manipulations and people see it, see it and think that this is a high art of medicine. That is why China ranks with my fame. So the best physician is my older brother. The middle brother stands down a bit, and I am the worst. In fact, this mythological character is a direct analogy of Dhanvantari in Vedic mythology and also a direct analogy of Saint Pantelimon, the healer in a Christianity. This is also a chance that it is the same person. What do we mean by constitution? We should determine some basic features to identify them in clinical manifestations. It is more correct to call it the constitutional peculiarities that underline the whole complex of the stable, repeated structural, structural anatomic, physiological features connected with functioning and metabolism that form the adaptation potential and also the physiological features. I always say that the acquired constitution is like a layer pie that has a, at least three layers. Morphological layer, in this case it is a structural, structural anatomic layer. The second layer is a physiological processes and the third level is physiological aspects of a person. Psych psychological aspects of a person, I'm sorry. All the complex is formed under an effect of two main factors the innate and the acquired characteristics. 
and disease can start developing under the influence of both prakriti and vikriti. It is important that physician knows the constitution type of the patient because constitutional characteristics form a tendency, a specific predisposition to development of different pathologies and diseases. And if we know the constitution type and imagine what possible diseases can start developing in this person and we can see them at the stage of, of the pre-existing disease through the correction of the constitutional peculiarities, we can prevent the development of the disease. This is exactly what the older brother did in the story. Now let's turn to Ayurveda and anal analyze what constitutional types are there in Ayurvedic medicine. Most of the people knowing Ayurveda on its popularized level are aware that there are doshas representing different regu regulatory systems. They are Vata, Pitta and Kapha. And in fact, the combination of doshas form ten constitution types in Ayurveda. Nine of them are dual, and the tenth stands for tridosha balance. Few people understand that, for example, vata pitta and pitta vata types are two different constitutional types that have their own structural, anatomic, physiological, and psychological characteristics. It may seem that they should be the same as it is a combination of the same doshas, but on the level of pancha mahabhuta, on the level of gunas and micro elements, these characteristics are combined differently, forming predispos predisposition to a peculiar type. And this unique type has an equivalent in traditional Chinese medicine. This scheme pictures the dual types in the way that you see the change of each type according to the rainbow colors. You can see that there are six dual types, three clear types, thus we have nine types as in traditional Chinese medicine. In Ayurveda we also have this tridosha balance type. This slide is an essence of today's lecture. Let's analyze this information. The state of the low level of ojas is an equivalent of the chi energy emptiness. As you may see, the state from the point of view of dosha balance corresponds a pure vata dominance. When there is an excess of vata, it is out of balance. Vata pitta constitution type correlates with blood emptiness constitution in traditional Chinese medicine. Vata kapha type with its low level of agni correlates with yang empt emptiness type of the empty cold syndrome. Pitta type is a direct match for yang excess. Pitta vata type is yin emptiness. And pitta kapha type determined in traditional Chinese medicine as accumulation of heat and humidity. And kapha types, the pure kapha type is accumulation of phlegm and moist. Kapha vata type is an equivalent of stagnation of qi energy and kapha pitta type is a blood stagnation. After the comparison of two traditional systems of knowledge, there appeared a special harmony between them. And though it may seem that there are a lot of contradictions between the systems, it is clear that they have the same roots. And if one acquires knowledge of both Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese, she or he will have a deeper and more clear view of the problem and will be able to formulate more accurate recommendations. Emptiness of Qi energy. Let's try to define it from the point of view of Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine. As I already mentioned, the Qi energy emptiness is a state of the deficiency of energy, which is known as Ojas deficiency in Ayurveda. In most of the cases, the deficiency of ojas takes place in case of vata imbalance. So this is a constitution type that is developing as a result of a lack of the primal energy called qi in traditional Chinese medicine and ojas in Ayurvedic medicine. Insufficient energy potential manifests itself as a slackening in the functioning of organs, as problems connected with repletion of the body with prana through breathing and decreasing of the life tonus and of an activity of the person in general. This is an unfolded definition of this constitution type from the conceptual point of view. Let's discuss a clinical example uh, that is described by Dr. Zaitsev, one of the famous ex experts in Russia in the field of traditional Chinese medicine. He tells that once this patient came to his office, the patient had recently celebrated his 30th birthday and was supposed to be in a full vigor, but he complained on a lack of energy and extreme weakness. 
Within uh, the external examination, the man didn't look skinny or exhausted, but he claimed that for the past three years he had been feeling tired all the time during a working day, and in the end of the working day he got tired to the extent that he didn't have energy to talk to his wife or pay attention to his kids. And it is not even mentioning that that fact that in the young age this man had been into sports and had participated in many competitions. But now he was short of breath each time he was coming up the stairs. Within the deeper investigation of the case history, it also became clear that he was extremely susceptible to respiratory diseases, which is a very important indicator that you should remember, and no matter how warm his clothes was, he got cold every time, not less than six times. And usually those diseases had complications uh, such as bronchitis. And there was also one remarkable thing, as he said, that in the acute condition of the disease, when the intoxication took place, the temperature didn't go higher than subfebrile numbers. It was about 37 and 8 and 38 degrees of Celsius. Such a state can last for a long period of time, not for three or five days as it is in for normal people, but for two weeks or even more, of tiring, low-grade fever that takes away all the energy. In terms of emotional assessment, the man claimed that he had been feeling emotionally disemboweled and empty for the past two years. He had this specific creative kind of job connected with a certain form of art that he had used to motivate, that had used to motivate him and inspired him before, but lately stopped. All these symptoms, symptoms that I listed in this vivid clinical example are the symptoms of the qi energy emptiness. Let's say that the transient, transient periods of lowering of the level of energy of vata with lowering of ojas from the Ayurvedic point of view can happen with anyone within a short period of time during a lifespan. But now we're talking about a long-term manifestation constitutional emptiness of energy, or as we simply name it, the lack of vitality. Traditional Chinese medicine tells us that this initial energy of life is given to us by our parents, and its quality determines the quality of the innate life energy of a child. In China, it is traditionally called pre-celestial qi energy. Also, we specify additional energy, qi of air and qi of food so-called post-celestial qi or the state of ojas of the person depend, depends on these qualities and both of them pre-celestial and post-celestial qi energies from an energy portrait of a person qi of a body its sufficiency or lack is determined by the constitutional emptiness of energy if we look at the qi hieroglyph we'll see that it consists of two parts the first part starts on the top and captures the right side below. In fact, it also captures the inner side of the second element. And the first part denotes steam or fumes. In other words, it is a, a fine, subtle energy that is impossible to touch or see, but at the same time we can see it by its manifestations and the actions it is responsible for. The second part of the hieroglyph that is located inside is connected with the seed that begins germinating. Combination of these two components form the hieroglyph of qi, and it shows that as the germinating seed has a hidden potential of turning into a plant, each person has this energy of life that allow body to develop. When it comes to Ayurvedic term, the direct equivalent of qi is ojas. It is a Sanskrit term and it means the energy that gives us a life force and vitality. As Vasant Lad mentions in his books, that is a superfine essence that each dha to transfer in a chain of the interaction between Ayurvedic tissues and stimulates the growth of the physical body. David Frawley connects notion of ojas 
quintessence of certain hormonal secretions stimulating the development of the physical body, but first of all they support the immune system because the immune system hinders the aging of the body, and the more effective is the functioning of the immune system, the longer a person stays young, the longer is the physical life of a person. In case of an error in this mechanism, due to various reasons, and the orgies is low, one can get different problems, not necessarily connected with the immune system, but with the danger of oncology. We know that from the traditional point of view, one of the reasons of developing of cancer is extreme lack of energy. If we are talking about orgies, we say that it fills our body with energy like water fills the glass. We drink orgies very fast and it inevitably gets consumed very fast and we can stop consuming, consuming only if we eat the right food that contains more energy than the dead food, if we breathe properly, if we study qi gun, pranayama or the healing breathing from the perspective of the modern systems of treatment. This energy has this activating function in the body. It awakens creativity. This energy warms us and its deficiency leads to getting cold. It protects us due to hormonal secretion, protecting the physical body, enhancing the normal morphogenesis of the tissues. This system keeps metabolism in a normal range, needed for a normal functioning of the body. The main source of ojas or chi is the innate energy that more likely depends on karmic factors and it happens for a reasons. Sometimes we get a lot of energy, sometimes we get few and this innate component is a very hard to change component, though it is possible to change it. If I may put it this way, the inner power is something that is laid by for a rainy day something that body spends under no circumstance, only in case of emergency, when it has to use this storage. And usage of this storage sharply exhilarates the process of aging. Another source of energy is the one that we take from outside. As I already mentioned, it is food and air. So the improper food from the point of view of traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda is the reason of most of the diseases. It is very important to understand constitutional aspects of diet taking into account your nature and individuality. Improper breathing from the physiological and psychosomatic point of view is a reflection of veget vegetative developments in the body and an incorrect breathing pattern form a certain deficiency of prana or a hypoxemia of the tissues that do not provide the needed amount of energy. There is a third source of energy and few ones are aware of it. This sort of source of energy can transform two previous sources even against the background of not fully correct diet. This source is connected with the state of mind and the way of thinking because if the mind is in a sattvic state it has a direct connection with Jivatman or the soul and it is an infinite source of energy. Remember yourself in a state of a creative insight when thoughts and ideas gush out of you and you don't even notice that you want to eat because this state of awe just gives a powerful energy potential. But for most of the people there is a block between Jivatman and the state of mind connected with the rajasic and tamasic tendencies prevail and they prevent us from getting the amount of energy needed for our development. This slide contains a general idea about the reasons of emptiness of chi energy or lack the ojas. Lack of ojas, I'm sorry. From the point of view of traditional Chinese medicine, a deficiency, de deficiency of the innate energy is always connected with the weakness of the parents' bodies. Ayurveda elaborates that a weak body was given to the parent parents not by accident, this was influenced by karmic factors. The second reason is an irrational diet. With no compromises, TCM claim, claims that all the children or arti on artificial feeding have a predisposition to this constitutional state of the lack of energy. And here we are not talking about supplemental but only about artificial feeding. 
when moms stop breastfeeding from the first days since the child has been born. The second factor here is not balanced di diet from the point of view of constitution type of a person. As a person, products uh, have their own constitution. And in fact, products can have allopathic or homeopathic effect. Some products will enhance the predisposition to the emptiness of energy. There are products that, instead of giving the energy, take it away. Insufficient, insufficient nu nutrition, various modern diets for losing weight, lead people to losing orges and qi energy. Intake of the refined products containing preservatives take the energy away. Another reason of losing the energy are reasons of, lo of losing the energy are connected with the improper lifestyle, full of work, to the point of exhaustion, high physical loading, and states of the body and mind that, mind that cause emaciation of the energetic potential as chronic diseases and improper daily routine. Another special factor is climate. It is especially notable when a person moves to another country with a severe climate to get a job, if the person has predisposition to the emptiness of energy in a severe climate, the process of adaptation will fail and he or she will get a stable energy deficiency state. As a result, a chronic disease of the weakest area. Ayurveda elaborates here that another significant reason of losing ojas is a mind, mind disorder. There is a specific behavior of, of a person induced by the intake of dopes, energizers, and also an improper sexual activity that lead to the emaciation of energy. What stands for a mind disorder? In fact, this slide shows the immersion of a person into a certain psychosomatic state, starting with losing of a sattvic state. It happens when a person starts equating him or herself with a limited stereotype knowledge which he considers correct. The most typical example here is a teenager who sees a stereotype behavior of the older smoking teen, teens, for example. The teenager takes this behavior for a correct one and starts behaving the same, identifying himself through this limited knowledge. As a result, we get this chain reaction that in the end leads to wrong choices, causing a conflict with the laws of nature that support our health, so we get an imbalance and a disease. This is called mistakes of intellect or disorder of mind. This is a matter of will of mind. We choose whether to make this mistake or not. We choose either to spend, spend our energy potential or not. Another factor is an incorrect usage of emotions. Creative state can lead to the sharp increasing of energy, but at the same time the incorrect usage of emotions, so-called emotional toxins, such as greed, envy, jealousy, that cause fading of the sattvic state and emaciating of ojas. Those toxins prevent us from unfolding our talents and creative potential, and as a result we get the weakening of the sattvic states of state of mind, of sattva guna and following, and following equivalents of this state on the physical level. Clinical manifestation of the chi energy emptiness. There are several main features. You would hear about them from the patient, as he or she would tell you that he constantly feels exhausted, cannot rest. Along this, the patient would have certain vegetative manifestations, such as short breath, sweating, tachycardia, and in some cases, bradycardia. As a rule, such people are very passive in a group of people because they try to save the energy. The earliest symptom is a flabbiness of muscles, weights that were easy to carry in the young age now in their thirties seem to ha too heavy because of the sloppiness of muscles. Following symptoms would be pale skin, tired look in the eyes. You'd get the feeling that the person is tired of life. The patient would tell you that he or she doesn't feel the flavor of food anymore. All the food seems tasteless and don't give an emotional satisfaction of eating. Such people suffer from the excessive hair loss. There is also lowering of a resistant, resistance to external pathogenic factors. First of all, to pathogenic wind. As a result, they get frequent respiratory diseases that acquire a long-term character. Another interesting factor is a meteosensitivity, which would be in a direct 
proportion to the level of the energy emaciation. The more the person is sensitive to, to weather, the higher the level of the energy emaciation. Psycho-emotionally, such people are an introverted, which can be by mistake taken for vata imbalance. Vata people are considered as classic extroverts, but here, in order to save the energy, even vata people would get distant and shut. The external study of the person, a lingua diagnostics, in particular, would show a white coating on the tongue and a weak pulse. Diseases caused by the constitutional emptiness of the qi energy. First one is a secondary immunodeficiency causing frequent catheteral diseases, sore throat, ENT problems, all the inflammations connected with the channel of lungs. On a background of a constant lack of energy, these people would often have vegetative vascular dystonia. In a normal state, such a disorder would not bring much of a discomfort to a person, but people suffering from the energy emaciation would feel the vegetative disorder manifestations of a hypotonic character. It is mentioned in TCM that the emptiness of the qi energy causes an alteration in the normal position of the insides, which in modern medicine is called visceral ptosis. This part is dedicated to the objective methods of the assessment of general features of qi energy emptiness with the help of Vedapal's HSK. The main tab, tab to be paid attention to is a spectrum tab. Some of the parameters of the tab are the accurate markers of the low energy potential of the body. One of the parameters is a total power parameter. You can find it in a table denoted as a TP abbreviation and you can see it in an absolute value, milliseconds squared. If the TP index is lower than 500 milliseconds squared, a human start, starts using the forbidden storage of energy, the innate qi energy or orges, thus accelerating aging of the body. In general, it is correct to identify the level of energy as low when it is below the 500 milliseconds squared value. Moreover, if the TP index is lower than 300 milliseconds square, it may cause the development of certain chronic diseases that are determined by prakriti. If you manage to pull the level of energy out of this gap, bringing it closer to 1000, it means that you would really make the person's life longer, modifying the state on the level of the constitution na constitutional nature. Another parameter is a high value of a very low frequency index. Here it is shown with a blue color. VLF index shows the stress in the body connected with vata dosha. Indices of the time analysis in a histogram tab, we pay attention on two indices. First one is a stress index. For people suffering from energy deficiency, this index is higher than 750. With a serious energy deficiency, it is higher than 1000. Another marker that is very perceptive of any constitutional changes is a mode amplitude or MA. It is shown by the level of the graph, reflecting the mode value and its amplitude in the heart cycle duration. In this particular case, duration of the heart cycle is lower than 600 milliseconds, being located in the range of 575 milliseconds. The integral indices tab. For people with the energy deficiency, the morphofunctional state index is going to be lower than 25%. In better times, these people can climb up to the range of 25-50%, but in the period of acute deficiency states, they fall back down. Also, these people will always be in a red zone when it comes to a stress level index. Adaptation price index is always higher than 60 and 80%, showing that the body spends way too much energy that, than needed. Biological aging rate for such people is also higher than for other people. Subdosha tab is very useful in terms of orchas or qi energy analysis. It is important to know that this tab is designed for experts who know what they are dealing with. Subdosha state is to be estim estimated only in the morning in a natural state of a calm energy. In any other case, the indices will reflect a current state of the body, influenced by the current condition of the surrounding environment. You should pay attention to following subdoshas. As a rule, we'll get a pranavata stress. The body strains the energy and 
di uh, the body strains energy and direct it to the area where the, there is a lack of it. Histogram bar connected with uh, Vyana Vata will be situated in a deficiency zone showing the presence of the hypot hypotonic tendencies as well as meteo sensitivity, vascular sensitivity. Weakness of chi of the heart is a specific state of this syndrome connected with Vyana Vata and number of specific symptoms. Weakness of chi of lungs is connected with Prana Vata and Udana Vata. Weakness of chi of the gastrointestinal tract involves Samana Vata in the process. So besides taking into account the clinical symptoms, symptoms the low ener energy level in the spectrum complaints of the patients, you should also check with, the, with what channel the lack of energy is connected. It can be channel of lungs with the respiratory diseases, it can be a weakness of chi of the heart, accelerating vascular issues, and it can be a weakness of chi of the gastrointestinal tract producing disorders of digestion. Now let's talk about pulse characteristics. On the cardio intervalogram you'll see elements of sarpagati, krumigati elements. Sarpagati pulse is typical for a normal state of vata dosha. When vata dosha value in the histogram is lower than 5 points. When it is higher than 5 points, it is a direct indicator of vata dosha imbalance. In this case, it indicates the axis of the wind. Sarpagati will always be accompanied with other types of pulse, such as jalukagati. Even intermittent Jalaluka and Krumigati can be noticed on the intervalogram by the slight occasional cavings. Vega, the speed of pulse, is usually higher than 95 beats per minute. It shows a presence of a background begotten in a person. The person has a tendency to tachycardia reactions. Tali indicator will show arrhythmia. Bali is going to be weak. Due to vata imbalance, such people will have an unstable agni. Veda pulse will notify that there is a vishama agni. Such people can also have a dual constitution type in the situation of a compensation of energy. It is vata pitta and vata kapha, but in the situation of deficiency, they acquire a severe vata dominance. The scatterogram cloud will be of a highly compressed character located in the bottom left corner of the scatterogram. In a bioenergy tab, you can check target organs involved in the energy deficiency processes. Most of the people with low energy will get lungs strain because this is the only natural channel through, the, with, uh, through which the body will try to compensate the energy deficiency. As a rule, there will be a gap of energy in the heart, vessels, gastrointestinal tract and kidneys. Normal state of energy balances in the range of 8%. Energy is considered to be in a deficiency gap when it is lower than 4%. For those who work with a traditional Vedic therapy, an additional marker of the tendency of energy deficiency is a state of energy on the level of Muladhara chakra that will be situated with, within a yellow zone. Therapy. What is needed to be done in order to heal a person? What methods are to be used for the restoring of chi energy from the point of view of TCM and Ayurveda? One of the most effective methods is acupressure and moxibustion. Another method is acupuncture, which is available, available for a wide range of medicine specialists having required specialization. In the Western system, acupuncture can be performed by people not having a degree in medicine, but specialize in naturopathy and past and advanced training. Apparatus physiotherapy can be a great substitute for acupuncture, quantum physiotherapy in particular. Marma therapy with massage elements, diet therapy and herbal therapy. Sometimes it is needed to use all these methods to achieve results. Reflexotherapy and Marma therapy. First of all, we need to pay attention to special points connected with the strengthening of chi energy or strengthening of ojas. There are points that feel the storage of energy and there are points that fortify the energy that we already have that we already have, such as the one that is located on the urine bladder, V twelve, Feng Meng, Marma Purushtra or Antar Amsa, Feng Chi, Feng Fu, and Manyamula. 
The first point, Feng Meng, can be translated as wind gate. The most frequent reason of energy deficiency in a person suffering from cataract diseases is a pathogenic wind, and there are certain points, such as the wind gates point, that stop the action of the pathogenic wind by re removing the excess of it. These points are very effective in, treat effective in treatment of the diseases caused by the pathogenic wind and cold. It is located below the second thoracic vertebra. Sit and bend your neck towards and then find the protrusion on the back. It is a seventh thoracic vertebra. Then moving slightly down the spine, you'll find the axial vertebral bone on the first thoracic vertebra. Then moving slightly down again, you'll find the axial vertebral bone on the second thoracic vertebra. A bit, a bit down and aside the second vertebra, there is a point of the bladder channel. This point is usually associated with a fence or a fortification that, if to be influenced timely, would not allow the pathogenic factors to develop. This point is considered to be unique because it's crossing the channel that manages young energy and by influencing this point you stimulate young functions, enhance the immune system, fortify and protect the basic chi or ojas energy. Influ influencing this point on the early stage of the respiratory disease, you would stop it from developing. You should remember, though, that the pressing applied in acupressure should be of a strength enough to produce a needed pain sensation. Another effective method of influence this point is a warm wood cigar maxibustion. And also one of the effective methods of influence is a quantum physiotherapy. In Ayurvedic Marma Vidya, next to wind gate, there is Marma Prushtka point, that means spine. This point is also called, called Antar Amsa and located between the lungs. The three Marma Prushtha points are situated slightly lower and a bit more lateral than the third, fourth and fifth thoracic vertebras on the axial vertebral bone. The first Prushtha point has a significant effect on the upper respiratory airway. The second one influences trachea and large bronchi. And the third one has an effect on the process if the process is already developing in the tissues of lungs. Vasantlad claims that this marma is a great regulator for chi of the heart and lungs, as well as it has a great effect for different diseases of an inflammation character. We can influence this marma through acupressure combined with massage moves up to the painful sensations as to achieve a result, the doctor should cause a physical discomfort to a patient. Acupressure specialists must have this innate sensitivity. They feel marmas through touch and start influencing them. Acupressure with using of the Mahanarayan oil would be a very effective influence method for this marma. If you use massage therapy in your practice, it would be useful for you to obtain knowledge on marma acupressure. For the specialist who apply a point massage on the effective ma as one of the effective methods of influence uh, would be a laser therapy. In Vedopulse program we have a physiotherapy module and I in combination with this module we recommend you to use a Richter Vedopulse device produced by the QuantMed company. This device provides several ways of influence on the point. Beside the, l the laser that penetrate up to 14 centimeters deep into the body. This device is also equipped with LED infrared rays and stable magnetic field. This is how the flexotherapy module looks like. In Vata imbalance and energy deficiency you can choose a normalization of the functional state. The fourth zone in the picture is in fact Marma Prushtha. While designing this module we used principles of both physiotherapy and Marma Vidya to have a maximum effect. The next point is a point called wind pound. It is located somewhere in the area of the connection of muscles to the nape and corresponds to the gallbladder channel. In Chinese tradition this point is compared with a door hinge. It means that this point can open the door as well as shut it. 
So in respiratory disease, influencing this point can be a great measure to shut the energy from the pathogenic wind, especially if one is followed by fever. It is impossible to influence this point by moxibustion because it is located in a hairy part of the head. So you can only apply acupressure and quantum therapy with the help of Vedapal's device. The third point is called the wind residence and it is located in the end of the occipital bone. If you place the finger in this area, you would immediately, it would immediately fall into the neck socket. This point is also affected in respiratory diseases. And as it is also located in the hairy part of the head, it is reasonable to use reflexotherapy and acupressure methods. The direct equivalent of this point is Manyamula Marma. In Sanskrit it means beginning of the neck. According to Vasant Lad, this point is extremely effective for decreasing of the high in intracranial pressure through dumping cerebral blood circulation, decreasing the muscle span spasm caused by osteochondrosis after a person was blown through. It is also effective in case of migraine and it stimulates agni. You can influence the point using various oils. In case of energy deficiency it would be more effective to use Mahanarayan oil. Aside of that you can also use a quantum therapy. Those were points that fortify the, fortify the energy we already have. An independent topic on energy deficiency syndrome is a chi of the heart emaciation. As I already mentioned, such people have vegetative vascular dystonia manifestations with a tendency to hypertension. Meteosensitivity follows this state. A person starts suffering from the intolerance to the slightest physical load. Physical training of any kind causes a hypoglymic state that provokes headaches and migraine. They point out that they also suffer from insomnia, reduced capability to focus attention, syncopal states, manifesting through jitterness and switching a horizontal position of the body to a vertical one, as well as blackouts and tinnitus. For such patients there is a very effective reflex point called spirit gates. You can check, you can check out all the modules in a reflexotherapy module you would, find, you would find this point, and you would only need to know its code according to the international nomenclature. In this case, it's C7, which means that the point is located in the heart channel according to French nomenclature. There is a common uh, World Health Organization nomenclature, Western nomenclature, and French nomenclature that have been used in Russia historically. Influence, influencing this point, uh, we would achieve a very strong harmonizing effect and in some cases it would be even possible to cut short the acute state of the disease. You can find this point in the wrist crease. You can influence it, it by acupressure as well as by laser emission using the Vedapulse device. Now let's discuss methods of restoring the energy. There are certain points that not only fortify but also restore the energy. Those points are located in the stomach channel, in the interior middle meridian, and they are connected with marmas of stomach. One of such points is called the eternal youth point, and advanced specialists claim that it is the main point for restoring the energy of life. It is located along the stomach channel approximately three tunes lateral from the tibial tubercle and just below the knee. According to Chinese tractates, if you want to live up to 100 years old, this point should never get healed over because of a constant wormwood moxibustion influence. So the main influence method for this point is moxibustion. Marma Vidya equivalent of this point is Charana, lateral point, which in Sanskrit means movement. According to Vasant Lad's book, this point is very effective in cases of lower extremities, blood circulation disorders. At the same time it stimulates functioning of kidneys through stimulating the ejection of the of the glucocorticoid hormones in the otrobiliary capsules. We can influence this point through acupressure using different oils. The best oil would be Mahanarayan. Guan Yuan point is a point that also called prime chi gates. It is located just below the belly button. This point is considered as an effective influence point in cases of gastrointestinal energy deficiency 
This point is very good in restoring the prime energy. One of the best ways to influence this point is a moxibuction therapy. Another reflex point located in the same area is Marma Basti point, which means bubble in Sanskrit. This point is located in the med median line in the middle of the root between sympath symphysis and the belly button. This point is very effective in treatment of the lower floor of the gastrointestinal tract disorders as well as urological and gynecological disorders connected with energy deficiency. Basant Lad recommends to influence the point with massaging it in a circular motion using different oils suitable to a corresponding constitutional type. You can also use physiotherapy, first of all, polarized light. You should avoid magnetic therapy if there is a benign growth. Another point is called GC. It is located near the previous point and has a similar effect and requires the same methods of influence. Next point is the harmony of Qi energy. Located on the back, this point is considered to be the main point of concentration of Qi energy. Effective methods of influence would be moxibustion, basti and quantum physiotherapy. Marma Vidya analog of this point is Marma Ruka point. Influencing this point very effectively regulates chi of kidneys and atribillary capsules causing the release of the adaptogen hormones. Energy point is located in the channel of kidneys. Influence, influencing this point would help with the deficiency of chi energy of kidneys, reproductive and urologic disorders. Tan Shu or celestial axis point is connected with the energy state on the level of pancreas and spleen. Effective methods of influence are moxibustion and physiotherapy. In Marma Vidya, Marma Nabhi or a navel point is an extremely powerful point. This point is a physical projection of the Manipura chakra and it has its subsidiary points regulating certain areas of the gastrointestinal tract. The last point is a life energy accumulator point. It is located in the middle of the blade arista. Influencing this point in combination with one of the points we already discussed, located approximately on the same level, would have a very strong healing effect in the respiratory and lungs diseases. Diet therapy. This large section is dedicated to diet, nutrition and food. Let's turn to classical canons of the therapy in Vata Dosha Excess or Excess of Wind. In certain shlokas of Ashtanga Hridayam, it is said that one of the most effective methods of treatment of wind excess is a moderate use of oils, gentle sudorific and cleansing remedies, and also sweet, sour and salty food. Nevertheless, sweet taste is of a cold nature, it is also heavy and moisty, so it is good in decreasing the wind. One of the most important conditions for people who suffer from the deficiency of energy is that food should be warm. Next method of treatment according to Ashtanga Hridayam is oil massage of marmas. One of the contraindications for such people is extreme climatic conditions. People suffering from the lack of energy should, should live in comfortable environment. Such people should be provided with a powerful supervision to calm their restless spirit. Another supporting method would be an eye greasing with a special Ayurvedic wines and oils stimulating acne, oil lavements, especially sesame oil lavements, or if you are not a vegetarian, it would be an oil made of products of animal origin. The food you pres prescribe for a patient suffering from the deficiency of energy should be nourishing and fortifying and, as it is already mentioned with sweet, sour and salty tastes dominating. At the same time, spicy, bitter and astringent tastes are not recommended. Spicy taste is of a hot nature, but it is extremely light, so it increases vata. Bitter and astringent tastes are very cold and also arouse vata. But there is one nuance. There are sama and nirama vata states. Sama vata state is followed by excess of ama. Ama combined with vata imbalance produces special condition.
In this case, to regulate metabolism, the bitter taste can be used for a short period of time in order to reduce the amount, amount of ama first. The food should be of a grounding, warming, moisturizing and soothing characteristics. The intake of food should be strictly scheduled to tune up the disordered gastric secretion. There is a great illusion that coffee gives energy to people suffering from the lack of energy. Coffee can be used for a short period of time, but daily use would only increase ener energy emaciation. Fruit It is interesting that many patients suffering from energy deficiency are raw food eaters. One should remember that raw food eat eating as well as fruit eating disagrees with energy deficiency and causes shortening of lifespan. Sweet fruits can be used in a small amount, preferably in the first, first half of the day, not being mixed with any other product or meal. Fruit contain a lot of ether, ether that gives cold and lightness, stimulate pathogenic wind. In the middle column you see the fruit that will increase energy potential and soothe the dominance of vata dosha. In the right column you see fruits that will strengthen the wind and work towards energy deficiency. All the products are divided by left columns as ones having a weak, moderate and strong action. Chinese dietology recommends sweet grapes, strawberry and apples underwent thermal treatment as raw apples can cause generation of gas. Vegetables One of the most important conditions for people with energy deficiency is that all the vegetables should undergo thermal treatment. In case you add raw vegetables into a salad, it is important that you also add oil, salt and spices that help in regulating agni, so one could easily digest raw vegetables in case of vishama agni. You should avoid vegetables such as cabbage and fresh onions. At the same time, boiled or fried onions is good in decreasing of excess of the wind. Let's check what will increase pathogenic wind and decrease the energy. You can see that first of all it is the types of all the types of cabbage that is better to exclude completely, at least during the first stages of treatment. Chinese dietology says that the most effective remedies for restoring the energy would be sweet potato, carrot that has sweet taste and neutral energy and also a Chinese yam or, or dioscoria that is of a sweet taste, warm energetics and has a very strong, strong harmonizing effect in gastrointestinal disorder. Crops. Crops is a basic product that is recommended in case of the deficiency of energy. It has not only a very strong energizing effect, but also soothes vata and restore the energy. It goes without saying that all the crops should undergo thermal treatment. It is important that the patient should, should not eat dry crops. An ideal situation is when the crops are cooked as a liquid porridge. In energy deficiency, wheat porridge would be a great restorative remedy. In Chinese dietology, they prefer rice due to its great energy restoration ability. Legumes It is interesting that nevertheless legumes contain proteins in vast. It is not recommended to use them in case of energy deficiency as they stimulate generation of gas, have a very strong desiccative effect due to its diuretic features. It is better to use golden gram as it is one uh, of a more balanced nature. According to Chinese dietology, tofu has a great energy restoration effect, especially it can be helpful for vegetarians. It is also allowed to use black bean, which is known for its low gas generation action. Nuts and seeds are a great substitution for proteins and they are strongly recommended in case of energy deficiency. It is better to fry them with the use of oil so they would be warm and oily and thus have an ultimate restorative effect. Over fried or dry nuts and seeds are hard to digest for people with energy deficiency. Here you can see that almost all the nuts and seeds are good in energy deficiency. It is only important to know that with what spices and in what form they should be taken. In Chinese dietology they prefer ginkgo nucleoli, lotus seeds and chestnuts. Milk products are certainly providers of life energy and they are not 
and there for sure would have a very strong restorative action and soothing, soothing effect for vata dosha due to their moist and heavy nature. But at the same time as milk products are of a cold and heavy nature, they are very hard to digest. That is why it is better to take milk products in combination with spices and in a warm condition. It is allowed to use and eat almost all the types of milk products except ice cream. According <clears throat> to Chinese dietology, milk is a great nourishment for qi energy and blood due to its sweet taste and neutral, slightly cold energy. Products of animal origin for non-vegetarians, uh, according to Ayurveda, meat is a great decreasing, in decreasing pathogenic wind. Chinese dietology also directly recommends meat products for people with energy deficiency. In case a grown-up becomes a vegetarian after eating meat for all of his or, or her life, once having energy deficiency on the background of, uh, of energy deficiency, the person may feel a strong hunger for meat and lack of energy state can cause a breakdown of a vegetarian diet. If you switch to a vegetarian diet gradually, it is recommended to eat white meat and also lacta over vegetarian food, when eggs is the only meat allowed, being a great wind-reducing remedy. One of the shortcomings of products of animal origin is that they stimulate producing a vama. For people who have been vegetarians for a long period of time and for some reason suffer from energy deficiency, it is recommended not to start eating meat again, but to substitute it with life-giving herbs and appropriate diet. For non-vegetarians, it is important to mention that there are certain products that are effective in soothing pathogenic wind and there are also products that can strengthen it, such as a pork. Chinese dietology is more liberal when it comes to meat and recommends to people uh, with energy deficiency products of animal origin, focusing on beef and chicken. Oils. According to Ayurveda, oils is the main product that should be used to reduce the excess of patho pathogenic wind that causes energy deficiency. Most of the oils are hard to digest, that, that is why in Ayurveda oils are usually used externally. It is also known that oils of a plant origin are of a light guna, giving, giving light characteristics, which is not good for vata disorder. That is why oils of a plant origin usually mixed with ghee. Here you can see that one of the types of oils that is not recommended to internal usage is a margarine. Spices. Digestion of the people suffering from energy deficiency is highly imbalanced, so we should carefully choose spices that would reduce the amount of wind. First of all, it should be spices having a hot energy. Among them, the most important is salt. It perfectly combines those gunas that help to that help to regulate digestion in the most effective way. Most of the spices can be recommended except highly pungent ones. Now let's talk about herbal therapy. Certain herbs can provide the needed restoring effect to people with energy deficiency, becoming lifespan companions to a person. Both in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, one of the most effective herbs is a ginseng, which is translated as a human root. According to classical Chinese sources, ginseng is a great innate energy restoration remedy and it takes the first place amongst the rest of the herbs. It restores qi energy, nourishes gastrointestinal and lungs channels and it can be recommended in all the qi deficiency syndromes. We start to understand why ginseng is that effective in energy deficiency when we turn to its constitution. It has a bitter-sweet spicy taste, hot energy ushna and sweet vipaka after being digested. All of the qualities that needed for energy restoration and soothing vata dosha. We can say that it has a three dosha shamaka effect har harmonizing all the doshas. In case of overuse it can arouse pitta kapha and even vata dosha. It is recommended in a recovery stage and in case of energy emaciation. According to Ayurveda, ginseng has a great restorative effect for all the tissues. Ginseng is connected with vata subdoshas and subdoshas of higher nervous activity. Next life-giving plant is astragalus, or the head of plants restoring qi, as they call it in Chinese medicine. Astragalus is more available than ginseng. 
and it is said that if ginseng has a deep restorative effect, meaning it restores energy deeply in the body, astragalus has a broad restorative effect, meaning it spreads the energy widely in the body. According to modern pharmacy, estragal is considered to be close to steroid hormones by its action, and due to this anabolic action, it, it is able to restore the energy. Estragalus has a sweet taste and heavy energy which is opposite to vata excess and works towards energy restoration. Another effective remedy is a polypore. This fungus has a very strong anti-oncological effect as well as inner energy restoration effect for people with cancer. Another effective herb is well known is lacorice. Though glyceriza is of a cold nature, its heavy and moist characteristics, as well as sweet weepak, increase ojas greatly. If you check its action described in Sanskrit and karma section, all of its actions have a soothing effect for vata dosha and restore the energy. In TCM, lacorice is called the oldest state figure because it doesn't only restore the energy but also it is a key component in many herbal composi compositions due to its harmonizing effect for all the items of the composition. Amongst the classic Ayurvedic herbs, it is important to mention Ashwagandha or Vitania somnifera. Its taste, its sweet taste, hot energy and sweet vipak will have a great effect for soothing vata, reducing nervous emaciation and regulate all the processes connected with excess of wind. Another herb in Sida is Sida cardifolia or bala which means giving strength. In its action this herb is even stronger than Vitania somnifera. Herbs can be used if available here you can see additional herbs that can be used in treating energy deficiency state. According to certain Chinese treatises, it is recommended to drink tea called Eight Treasures Tea. Many components of the tea are quite exotic, which may seem hard to find, but you can meet it in a ready-to-use form, with all the components already mixed in a needed proportion. Here is also an Ayurvedic herbal composition according to, according to David Frawley who recommends this composition in case of a sharp energy emaciation, neural weakness, reproductive challenges, impotence and neurodegenerative disorders. It consists of ashwagandha, shatavari, kudzu, piper longum. Warm milk is usually used as a carrier or a conductor. You can also make a milk decoction with the listed herbs. This is a classic Western clinical herbal therapy which uses the herbs of atonic, adaptogenic, restorative and multivitamin action. It contains rhizomes of Rapa, Raponticum cartamodis, Radiola razia, Glyceriza, as well as Hypericum and rose hips. Recommended to be taken in the form of a decoction half of the glass two or three times a day for three or four weeks. Here are another herbs that can be recommended in Qi energy deficiency. Please note that this list is formed according to Western clinical herbal therapy. Besides of the direct energy, def energy deficiency state, there is a mimicry of the energy deficiency state connected not with energy deficiency, but with the blockages of energy. It is more fre frequently met in people in their 30s and 40s when cardio intervalogram tells us about the energy deficiency state, but physicians should be careful as it can be a blockage of energy syndrome.